uh, again, my name is Garrett Hart. Um, I don't do Rails every day, so and I'm also using something new. I'm using Vim, which I'm relatively new at, so I may struggle a bit. But uh, thank you. I, I really, I really, I am enjoying Vim. It's started. To, I'm in other apps and I'm hitting J's and K's and it's, ah. Okay, but uh, active. So Rails for years has had um, scaffolding where you could generate forms to, to help you CRUD uh, an, an active record, record model. And also in the early days of Rails, back in like 2006 and 2007, there was a little uh, back and forth between uh, the Python crowd with Django. And one of the things that it would say that was better than um, what Rails had was that uh, Django had an administrative uh, uh, interface that came that was available out of the box, and I agreed with the, and I still agree with the Rails philosophy that that kind of thing should be separate. And and, um, uh, and uh, but we do have uh, if you're new to Rails, like I'm, I'm con continually new to Rails because I just don't do it for a living. But uh, if you're new to Rails, a tool like this can be helpful to help you you get up something useful fairly quickly. There's another um, sort of admin tool called Rails Admin, and I'm sure it's equally as good as this. I just, I've, I actually, at some point, I'm going to loop back and take a look at that one as well. It's not. Oh, it's not. Okay, so then Joel speaketh, and I will always yield to his opinion. So that, that's good. Okay, so I'm not going to look at that. And um, so for tonight, we've got um, Active Admin and. Uh, there is a, I found a nice tutorial out there, and I'll have this uh, link at the end, and what, we're literally just going to work through this and um, build ourselves um, a little task management tool. So, let me go to that. Let's see. Okay. So, I'm in, I've created a fresh, um, Rails project, and we're at the, uh, the first thing we're going to do is add the um, gems we need for Active Admin. And there they are. And we're going to write that. Oops. And then we're going to do uh, bundle install. And So we ran bundle install, and now we're going to run the command to, this is where we're, the first thing where we're going to hit uh, active admin, and we're going to hit install. It's generated some stuff for us, now we're going to do a rake. DB migrate. This puts things into our database for us. And now we should be able to let's open up the new window. Is uh, device automatically included? Correct, mm -hmm. yes, it can is. You, can you substitute something else or um, I don't know. Yes, I, I know you can add can can to it additionally if you want to. Okay. I've seen people talking about that. Use device for the back end and use something else for your front end. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so here, let me get a little bit smaller. Here's uh, uh, what we got out of the box. Okay. Okay, we need to, one of the things we need to do is to uh, <coughs> change the mailer set up. We need to add a line. Ah. Admin, the default is admin example, um, password, password. <laughs> <laughs> Can I? What did I do wrong? Password. Do you need to see the database for you? The walk-in screen's pretty. There we go. Sorry about that. I must have missed that password. Thank you. So um, there we are on a dashboard. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to need to administrate our um, users. So we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to use um, Active Admin Generator. What it's doing is telling looks. Oh, so I forgot. We got to do that. Yeah. That's better. Okay. So now we should be able to go back here. We should be able to hit refresh. And we now have up in the top there. My mouse again. And admin users. And I'm going to shrink it a little bit. But what it did is it it took all those all the there's all kinds of fields that are associated with um, device on the the uh, user model and brought them in. And obviously this is not very usable. But out of the box we're going to look some more at this. But out of the box we get the columns we have. It's sortable. We get these filters that we can use to filter down large amounts of data, and um, but now let's work on getting this to be a little bit more usable. So we're going to go into the file that was generated by Active Admin for the admin user. What it does is it creates this uh, director underneath app. And so I'm, I think maybe one thing to notice here is that we had a lot on the screen already, and it was for this admin user right here, and there's nothing in here yet. But what we're, what we're going to do is put in some logic that says that uh, we're going to see later, this is for the index of so the list page. There's the sort of standard CRUD names for um, Rails. When you, when you get a list of models, it's an index page. And later on, we're going to see a show do. And that'll, when you look at a specific um, instance of, in this case, an admin, um, we'll have a show do and we'll, we'll, we'll modify that. But so what we're doing here is we're saying we want a column for email, the current signed in it, last signed in it, the number of accounts. And then the default actions will be 
the um, uh, update, delete, and uh, um, view links. So let's write this guy, head back to our browser and hit refresh. And now our um, rows have been limited down. And when I was talking earlier about the, the standard ones, it's th that puts this column in right here, OK? OK, so. Okay, so the, other, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at we're going to look at the new admin field user page, and it's got all this stuff in it again related to the uh, the model that got generated, and we don't care about that. And because they're using um, devise, uh, we can actually create an admin with just the email field. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into admin user. And we're going to limit that form to being uh, just the email form. And the thing to note here, let me get this spacing right, is uh, they use a version of um, Formtastic normally it'd be in a ERB file, but if if you know that it's just basically it's Formtastic in a class, and um, what this is saying is we want a form or for elements in the form, uh, we want to wrap it in a um, what do they call the a form set or whatever it is the field set. field set thank you, that's called admin details and all we want is an input email and then we want the um, cancel and, and save buttons. So I'm hit escape. Right. Tap back to our browser, hit refresh, and there we go. Okay, the other thing we need to do, and this is the first time we're going to actually touch a um, Rails model directly, is quit out of here. So this is the um, what got generated for us by um, Active Admin. And we are going to add a little bit of logic to um, after create, we want to um, email some password instructions and if it's a new record I don't understand what that's really doing so I'm a trained monkey at this point and I'm going to move on okay and now I believe I can actually um, create a new user okay so let's go back there and Z shift .com. Great. So it's not going to, oh, we'll see what we got. I wonder if I got an idea. I wonder if it picked up that. I wonder if I did. I did that environment thing after the. I think I did I have my server running already. I'm wondering if it's. Rock and roll. Okay, so I I made that edit to my development environment. Um, 
and I not I don't think I need I think I needed to restart my server to do that. So let's go to admin users and we can do a list and we've got miles. Let's get the next one again. We've got miles and the original one. Um, I think we still have to do so we need to go back to the here we gotta find that mailer. To actually make that useful. Admin. And I think what you should see here is after this, if this works, is it will switch from admin to miles. Or we got to confirm the password. Okay, now we're logged in as miles. So excellent. And we go back to admin users where we get our list. Make it smaller again. Okay. Now I believe we are going to create a project model. <coughs> it's going to have one thing, it's going to have a title. Okay. We need to do reg db migrate to. Oh, I'm sorry. To get it into the database. And before we um, uh, generate um, the Active Admin interface for this, we're going to um, add a validation to this so we can see how that gets reflected in the UI. Okay, now that we've got that, we're going to generate our active admin UI. And kind of the same thing we did for the, the admin user, and we just specify the model project. I believe we can go back to our UI and we hit refresh and we should, should see a new projects up here. We'll hit this guy and basic crud, we got just a title. Uh, let's see what we're going to create at this point. Let's go ahead and create a few projects. ones for miles. That was we played soccer. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, oh, the other thing we wanted to do on that was uh, we wanted to validate that our 
let's actually we can add this one. <clears throat> let's try and save it without a um, title. And it complains, and that's hooking into that validation we added to our model. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is create another Rails model to task. And it's got uh, a project ID, which is going to reference the project list that we just created, the admin user ID, which we created earlier, um, a title string, an is done, and a due date. Moving it to the database. Okay, now before we generate um, the UI for this, we're going to set up a few relationships. Uh, this map, the task is going to belong to. project and it's going to belong to an admin user. I'm going to validate the presence of all those things and um, we're going to make sure that the is done is either true or false. And then we need to update our um, admin user to set up the relationship in it for tasks has uh, and we're going to do the same thing for projects. So now we can generate the UI for that model. <coughs> Going. Got to actually hit return. Uh, let's see. Okay, now we should be able to refresh. And now we've got tasks. And We're going to fix this later. So, looking at your generators that you have there, yes. I don't know if you copied them from the garage yourself, but uh, you can take care of those like as many belongs to stuff with just the references keyword. Okay. In, In uh, when you're doing the generating the Rails models. Yeah. So it'd be okay. like. Uh, admin user colon references okay. instead of admin user ID and then it just automatically puts that crap Good in your files, which is pretty handy. It also makes the uh, <coughs> makes the migration correctly too. Which is 
distance. Okay. So I got some tasks, and we can go back to tasks and get our list. Okay, we're still kind of crowded, and we're going to work on that. Okay, so we've got, let's see, we are, we've got a fair amount of stuff on this. We don't really need to know the created that and the ID. We really just need to know the, the title of this page. And so what we're going to do is pare down those uh, <coughs> fields. And the other thing we're going to do is over on this this filter over here on the right we don't we don't need these guys either so we're gonna <coughs> remove those So we talked earlier about affecting the index page. That's the block for that. Um, we're going to have one column for the title, and it's going to link to uh, the project. We're going to put those default actions back in. And this bit right here is where, so when we start specifying what we want in the sidebar over there, we want to filter just on the um, title. Right. And now if we hit refresh. Cleaned it up. This links us to the project details, and we can now search by the title. Let's just go ahead and um, check that out. Baby filter, boom, just baby. Very clear filters, and it comes back. stupid filter where it does like a database like or is it actually using some sort of search? Um, I've gone that deep yet, Joel. I don't know what it, I just like, cool it's there, it works kinda. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, it's pretty cool compared to regular scaffolding, I would say. The, um, the, um, what was the gem that was, uh, when we go, I want to keep my place on my list of to-dos here, but we'll go back and look at the gem and see what it is, and I might tell you better about what it's capable of doing. I thought it was meta search or something. Yeah, it was meta search, <coughs> right. Um, okay, so let's look at the, we're going to do, now we're going to do a change to the project details page. <coughs> More stuff we don't really need or care about. So this time I've been talking about doing the, um, show block, and now we're going to actually do one. Oops, I was already there. Okay, so... What we're doing is our actual, our model had, that we're saying that the title is going to be title, which duh, but it's, we have, we actually have that attribute on our model. So this is, this is um, active admins reference to title, and this is the model's active title. Then we're going to have a panel, its title is going to be tasks, so a project has tasks, and we're going to make a table, and we're going to loop through it, and, and we're going to put these columns on their status, and um, there's a little magic out here to the right. It's got some nice formatting that we're going to see in just a little bit where it'll, it'll uh, put um, color-coded words in for you. Title assigned to and due date. Escape. Right. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. And if we hit refresh. 
cleans it up quite a bit. So let's let's just add one more task so we can see. Okay, let's let's make miles late on something. Okay, so we've got two things there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, this is something I thought was particularly cool, where it started stepping away from other, I think it's already pretty cool, but it's, another, uh, it's scopes. You can, um, let's just, let's just do it and then I'll. So what this does is we are going to set up scopes and these items are going to show up on top of the task page. So the default one's going to be show everything. Uh, this one's going to be due this week. It's got some logic in there to filter those down, ones that are late, and ones that the current admin user owns. Oh yeah, I'm on projects. Okay, let's go here to tasks. Okay, so here we go. Let's uh, dang it, so let's, uh, let's spread it out a little bit so we can filter some. So let's see. We're logged in as Miles right now. If we hit the mine here, it filters it down to just his two. He's just got baby project on. Um, Miles has got one late one, and here's all. That's pretty slick. Okay. I'm go back to task for a sec. Okay. this. Now we're doing the, so we're looking at the show page and we're going to limit things to creating a panel and just paring down what shows up on that page. And one little thing, that a facility that comes out of the box with um, Active Admin is a, a commenting facility. If you didn't want that to show up on your page, you simply wouldn't um, put it in. Refresh. And now it's a little bit cleaner. Let's actually add a comment. I haven't done it yet. Okay, not bad. Okay, we're gonna. So now we're gonna add a a taskbar, a sidebar rather, to to this page to show while you're looking at. Um, This page, what other task you have? So, why are you looking at a specific one? Let's 
sidebar, other tasks, shows only on the show page, another table, and let's see, we're getting a status column and a title column. <coughs> Fresh, and we've got those. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is we've got a dashboard here, and there's nothing on it, so this would be your landing page. Right now, everything's underneath admin. There's a configuration where you can put this right up underneath root if you wanted to. And what we're going to do. So here we've got sections, tasks this week, and tasks that are late. Um, the, uh, when we look at the website for it, if we've got time, it's got a couple other formats. There's typically tables, but you can have a blog format and, um, some other, and a grid format, I think, if you want. So I just uh, worked through a demo. It's um, oh, we could do one other thing. Where we could fix that um, the admin uh, when you're editing an admin. Get the mouse up there. Or no, no, it's project. No, it's tasks. Tasks. And we're adding a new one. There. This is this is ugly right here, right? So this is where it actually went beyond the tutorial. I learned something on my own. Looked up um, Formtastic. Now it worked. <coughs> okay, so there's probably a way to do this more succinctly where you can change one item in a form but the only way I know to do it right now is to override the whole form so I had to put in something for every one of those fields mm -hmm. that was um, currently on it and the only trick is you have to tell it's 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 really impressive it's that Formtastic is smart enough to know that by reflecting on the database and and the and the, the, the uh, relationship that's set up that okay I'm going to use my admin user's ID and that select but when I display it I want to display the email address so just that simply that's just really impressive I think so right now to come back hit refresh. I'm, I'm not positive but you may be able to add a label method to the admin user model and it okay. may automatically even do it that way too uh, so you can also check, check the name. name I would suspect name maybe. Uh, yeah, but I haven't added a name to this yet. I think there's only an email address. Oh, you can yeah, I think it goes in order, like name, then label, or something oh, okay. like that. Yeah, yeah so this is, true. I haven't worked with it before. I thought that was just slick. So now, okay, so now our um, our select has something besides keys. That's all I got. We can, uh, I don't know if you wanted to see any sorting or anything like that, but it's uh, for people like myself who are continually starting out or actually starting out, to get something up and useful, I thought it was really pretty impressive. And I'm sorry I had my little freak out in the beginning there, but <laughs> it's just I'm using a lot of new tools at the same time. It's okay, this is a little freak out. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty pretty slick. Yeah. How many people are using uh, like admin interfaces? I know I know at one point somebody you did a presentation on Active oh, yeah. 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 Are you still using that? Or? It's it's not like. Um, it's a lot more uh, freeform, I guess. It's not so structured, so mm -hmm. you can get a scaffold up and running, and then you can do a lot to it, but it's not quite as uh, 
Garrett, do you know if there are any facilities for doing essentially Ajax updates of anything really easily? Um, I don't know. So I was thinking, you know, the, the now classic <coughs> JavaScript example program is the to-do list, and they've always got the right. Mm -hmm. Quick change so in place. You see our framework yeah. do something. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I suppose in this case, it's, it's probably all right somewhat that it, if it does lock you into device a little bit, because I assume at least, I mean, this is completely separate of the rest of your application, then you can do whatever kind of authentication you have to do with the user case. I'm guessing somebody who has some strong reason that they don't want to use device probably doesn't want active admin Right, carrying any of their load either. Mm -hmm. What I was wondering about is if there was a way to, so you maybe set up a lot of the stuff, and now you now you know you're going to do perhaps substantial deviations from how it does things. If you can get it to dump it all into out of the admin into actual uh, concrete rail stuff. I know one of the tools it uses the. Uh, so when you're creating um, restful resources. You know, you kind of generate the same set of models all the time, and it uses some kind of thing that, as long as you're sticking to the default um, controller methods, it, you don't have to recreate them. And then, if you want to make a change to them, you can simply override that one method. But I don't know. I, I, has anybody used that kind of stuff in production? What is yeah, inherited resources? Right. That's it. Right. So there's a lot of magic there. Is it performant, or do you? Or do I, I mean, I, I don't know about the performance of it. I, it's it's nice and it's handy, but like a lot of this stuff, I mean, I used it for a while and I really loved it, but then then sometimes there's too much magic and sometimes I don't know, it's just overkill. And I like these kind of things and, and device too, I mean, are really nice. What I worry is that I think you have to have a good communication channel with the client because you don't want something where you put up this admin interface for them, you know, in two days, and they're like, oh, wow. And then expectations are completely going away. And then at some point, they want some kind of something just little changed, but for some reason, it doesn't work with this. And then you, you figure out, oh, you got to scrap the whole thing. And all of a sudden, all this free stuff is gone. Yeah. And the same way with device, you know. It seems like the worst that would happen is you just go and take the gem source and put it in your app. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Active Scaffold, you just tie to the API whenever you want to change something. So like, I would hope it's soon that this has something similar. Can I you go check the rank tasks that are available? There might be some. Oh, I don't know. Is it just, is it like rake list or rake dash T, capture T. T? Like that? Yep. <coughs> Could I have limited it to the yeah. scaffolding? Grab. Just grab, yeah. yeah. Pipe grab, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. look like it. it would be in there, right? Yeah. yeah. If it was. Yeah. Well, you might have to, you might have to include something in your rake file to get them. Okay. The, one of the things I was diving on this kind of stuff is there are uh, there are sort of templating things where you can you can run something and it'll it'll temp give you like the classic sort of uh, UI that we we're looking at there that you can start with. But I would think seems like um, Twitter's is a Kickstart. What's it called? Bootstrap. Bootstrap is yeah. is, mm -hmm. is getting a little traction, and I don't know. I, I bet it would be. Kind of good to wait around a little bit until whatever your generator use that kind of stack or something. Yeah. I have now used Bootstrap in production. Yeah, what do you think? It's really nice. So have so I. I so spent about a minute setting up a modal dialog with some <coughs> jQuery that I just wrote. It was a lot easier to integrate than any other modal thing I've done. So. Mm. I just I, I looked at the generated styles and I stole a few out of there, and I haven't used the full thing. It's pretty cool. Yeah, there, there's like, I, I mostly I just stole the buttons. But. Yeah, I stole the uh, the tab selector. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The mobile dialogs and a couple other pieces. 
I'm done, thanks.